Um, the 24-hour rule is over. Um, I think we're focused on the things that we need to improve on. I think we're focused on just taking continuing, continuing to take steps every day at practice. Um, and I think we have to be eager about every opportunity we have, whether it be in a walkthrough, a meeting, um, practice, whatever it is. We got to be ready to attack it with the right intent. Um, and that, that's what we've got to do as a team to, to, can you, to continue to take steps. And I think one of, one of the things that's kind of caught my attention is the how, how this team is starting to realize the importance of togetherness and, and playing for one another, playing for the man next to you. So um, it's one of those deals. We just, one of those deals where we just gotta keep the main thing, the main thing, and. Um, Continue to attack every day and take steps, positive steps. How much of that togetherness do you think might come from your proclamation after the Texas game that the OS, the OU DNA is in you? I, I, I'm, I'm not take. sure. Um, I think it, it's a long season. Um, I think the, the different things we experience as a team um, may be overcome. Just, just the overall culture we have. I just think it's 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 all about us doing the things we want to do, us doing it together. Jill, is, is that togetherness, do you think, it related at all to the way there's specifically on offense, for instance, so many different guys are getting the ball right now. There's really not everybody's – there's a lot of sharing going on. Lincoln had, had referenced that after the game. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we have complete trust in everybody on the offense, everybody who touches the field, and – you know, every, every everybody's all into the team and doing whatever it takes. How have you seen that togetherness sort of evolve over the last few weeks, and how does that manifest itself in what y'all do on Saturdays? Yeah, just you, know, you talk about the approach we have in practice, um, the intent we have in practice when we do the things we do. Um, everybody's um, continuing to hold um, the man next to them to that standard and hold them accountable to doing the job. So. Um, it's it's an ongoing thing, but we just got to continue to move forward together. Jalen, you, when you talk about process-oriented, focusing on every workout, every this, every that, is that an attitude that you developed at Alabama, or is that something you have always had, even going back to high school? Well, I think I'm a coach's kid. I think that's probably why I am the way I am, um, why I approach the, the things, approach things the way I do. Um, growing up in a field house, that kind of being my daycare, um, just being around it, seeing all those things since I was maybe four years old. Um, and, yeah, going to Alabama and you know, playing for Coach Saban and being in that program, I think all of those things tie together. Were you, you say it was your daycare. Were you there every day growing up after dang, school? Dang near, dang near. Did you ever play a position other than quarterback? Um I have. I, mean, I, I just kind of play whatever the coach um, put me in. I mean, where where'd you spend time? I played some defense, some offense, tight end. Um, some defense. Did you ever play running back? No, yes, sir. Okay. Okay, when you see the versatility of this offense and so many different playmakers making plays, of course, you can't have legal egos in this offense. When you arrived here, was that something you immediately noticed that there weren't a lot of egos? Repeat your question. Well, with so many playmakers making plays, you really can't have an ego because you got to share the wealth. When you arrived on campus, did you see that mentality within the offense, players just not having egos being all in for the team? Yeah, I just think the mentality um, we have right now is just all about winning um, and, and doing it together as one. You talked about togetherness and all that after the game. You mentioned that the offensive line, some of the running backs, you guys go out to eat. How is that a, an important factor in that? And how, how do those dinners, you know, play into the culture of the, this program and this offense? I just think that's something that we do. Um, and we, we just try and do it. It's, I, don't, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. We, we go out to eat. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen, we know um, 
your preparation, mental preparation, is, is pretty well documented. But physically, um, you're, you're a guy, and I'm sure you, that you wake up on Sundays and you're sore and all that, but physically you always seem to be in a good spot come game time. Is that something you've developed over the years, again, being the, the coach's kid, or, or have you kind of developed different ways to keep yourself as physically ready as possible? I've been fortunate enough to to make it this far and kind of be healthy. Um, obviously, help healthy enough to go out there and help my team and try and do my job. So, yes, I'm fortunate for it. Do you do, do you do things to try to you know get yourself recovered better now, maybe as opposed to early in your career? Have things changed in that way at all? Um, I, I guess that's what the post game workouts are for trying to just knock out any type of soreness, um, some something like that, just to make, make me feel good about it. Is that something that Coach Wiley suggested or that you've sort of developed into doing that, or how did that I, I brought it up to him. I miss something I, I try to do after every game. I don't post it every game, but um, you know, I try to get the work in and stay true to it. Jalen, you mentioned – Obviously, being a coach's kid, sometimes those coaches, when they have sons on the team, sort of have a rule where they feel like they have to be harder on their kid than everybody else to, to kind of compensate or make sure that they're not playing favorites. Was that how it was with you and your dad? Repeat your question. Was he harder on you than everybody else? No. no. What kind of coach is, was he? I mean, yeah, laid I back? Think, or I intense? think that um, kind of explains it. He didn't treat me any different than he treated everybody else. Um, everybody was like his son. He held everybody to accountable to do their jobs. Um, I think I think the the key to co he always told me the one thing you want to do in coaching is um, you, you want kids to come back and when they when they do come back to you when they're maybe thirty plus and they have kids or whatever um, when they're grown men living their lives you want them to come back and them coming back shows that you had an impact on them um, so. I think that's the coolest thing I get to see right now is seeing all the players that do, all the players I watched growing up and all the players that do come back to, you know, Chumbie High School and show their love for my, my, my father. What were some of the ones, the guys that came back that you remember? I, I don't want to get into it. I just said that. Jeremiah pointed out a, a play and when you threw a touchdown to Lee in the game and he wanted to shout out Marquise the way he came back, surveyed, and blocked the guy before he was able to get to you. You probably saw that back on film. I don't know if you feel it during the game, but can you just give us an idea of how good of a play that is by an offensive line and what it takes to make a play like that? Yeah, um, he, he, he he found a way to protect me. Um, he, he did a great job. He kind of cleaned up the pocket in the end. Um, and we were able to execute it and score. Is there a lot of those little kind of plays that we probably don't – to the untrained now, you can't really see on tape, but that happened all the time with the, with your offensive line unit. I think um, every game is an opportunity to learn. Um, we look we, we, as we reflect on every game. There's something where we look back and say, "Okay, yeah, we can do better on this, so we can't, so so we don't make that same mistake again." So I think it's just an ongoing thing with that. Got time for two more. Jalen, your uh, three years at Alabama, you, you guys didn't really suffer a, a big upset. In the regular season, I guess you lost the one game to Auburn, but at you know rivalry game end of the season, there were no ups and downs, no peaks and valleys, no setbacks. Does that carry over to, to how you prepare here in terms of the process and, and you know the, your your lessons that you learned at Alabama, how to avoid those pitfalls? You know, y'all never asked me about the opponent we're about to play. That's that's what I was getting to. Was Kansas State? is up next. You guys are going to be a big favor again. How do you avoid those pitfalls? How do you avoid helping your team not look past the, the upcoming opponent? Because I think we're focused on playing our standard. I think we're focused on trying to improve every day. Um, we're, we're completely focused on Kansas State and, and trying to prepare for them. They're a really good team. They're, they're fast on defense, disciplined on defense, so we got to be prepared for them. Do you like going to – I mean, you spent – your time at Alabama going to many of the same stadiums. Do you like experiencing these new places, Kansas State, the Cotton Bowl, those kinds of things? Is that something that is exciting to you? 
Yep, uh, every opportunity I have to go to a different venue, I guess, um, try and soak it in, embrace it all, and um, go out there and compete.